All right, at this point, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the national lab opportunities that are open. Um, just a quick little safety note, if you're walking down the aisles on the sides, watch out for the cords, because not all of them are flat to the ground, and even the ones that are can trip you up. Um, so with that, the one below that, Okay, so uh, next chart. Go ahead and go to the next chart. Okay, so National Lab is a little different than the rest of the research opportunities that NASA puts out. In that National Lab, the intention was to set aside a part of the asset that is Space Station for users other than NASA, to make it available for other government agencies like NIH, like USDA, like DOD, uh, NSF, any other agency that had uh, objectives or um, mission goals that could use Space Station as part of what they needed to accomplish their missions, um, or to open it up for private firms, and by that we refer to both commercial companies, um, universities, not-for-profits, anyone who thinks that by using Space Station they could improve their business, they could, could develop a new business model or, or a new product um, by doing work or research. Uh, research is kind of implies science, but it could also be manufacturing or development or technology development. Um, and using space station and the microgravity environment for those kinds of things is also part of what we're trying to open up with, with designating part of station as a national lab. The key differences um, in national lab versus station is sort of two things. The research objectives are defined by somebody else. Um, they're either meeting, um, NIH's objectives to improve life on Earth, or they're meeting DOD objectives with their massive, you know, strategic plan and how they map to what DOD needs to do to improve the safety and defense of the country, or they map to some commercial company's development plan and show how this commercial company can improve manufacturing in the United States and keep business here at home or, or improve the U.S.'s um, uh, technical um, expertise or leading edge uh, capabilities in some area or another. Um, and normally, I say normally, the funding for those users comes from those other government agencies or private firms and not from NASA. Now, it's not always true, but that's where we're headed. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that. As Julie mentioned yesterday, um, Nas the NASA still provides, um, based on the way the budgets are set out now, up mass, um, integration work, um, trained crew, everything you need on space station, all of the resources, power, data, uh, down mass, um, crew time, all those things. You don't get charged for any of that. You have to have the funding to go build your widget, build your experiment, build your technology to demonstrate. Um, that funding generally does not come from NASA. Um, we have a couple of opportunities for researchers or experimenters or technology development personnel to get their payloads to ISS, and I'm going to talk through the first two of these, and then the NIH team is going to talk through the third one um, in just a few minutes. One of them is um, what we refer to in-house as a standing announcement of opportunity, and you, we call it that because, as you see, the due date is December 31st, 2014. Basically, what that means is we've opened up an announcement of opportunity that is available from now until then, and you can send in proposals anytime. We've actually dispositioned six or seven proposals against this announcement of opportunity since it was opened last April or May. Um, for some, for companies who came to us and said, I want to go build this, this widget, and uh, I want to open up this venue of science or this capability, in some cases it was essentially a facility that they wanted to though, then go sell uh, opportunities to other users in the facility they built and that we enabled and that company has built hardware um, from the time they submitted until they had hardware at KSC ready to launch was about six months. That's significantly faster than we usually do things in-house. But it was their, their development, their hardware, they met all our safety and interface requirements and they've got hardware operating on board and they've now signed five or six other 
contracts with other users to go use their hardware. So that's one of the things you can do with EAO. Um, we've got a number of university researchers who are coming to us with their own funding and want to do research. They just need access. This announcement is there to give these people access. The second one I'll talk about is what we refer to as a broad agency announcement or a BAA. If any of y'all have worked with DARPA or some of the other agencies, they do a lot of BAAs. Um, NASA does them in the science mission directorate quite often, but we haven't done them before out of, out of SOMD very often. Um, this BAA is actually open through next December, um, only because procurement wouldn't let us keep it open through 2014. That was our goal, but we'll, uh, we'll just reopen it again sometime late next year. Um, and again, this one is anytime you have an idea or a concept, and I'll talk about what it covers, and you want to send in a proposal, we accept proposals all the time. Uh, we actually have two ways to, to send in information on this one that I'll talk about in just a minute. Um, but so let's, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. So the, the AO, um, the standing AO, is it's entitled um, National Lab Opportunity for the Use of ISS by Domestic Entities Other Than U.S. Federal Government Agencies. And um, I realized I didn't put the website here, but I'll put that in. And then the charts we post, you'll have the website um, so you can go get that. As I said, it's open through December of 2014, meaning anytime you've got an idea and you want to send us an idea, we're happy to evaluate it and see if we can go enable it. So because of that, it's kind of a first come, first serve thing, right? If you've, if you've got an idea and you want to try and go do research on station and you've got funding and you've got a, a way to go do, do that, the sooner you get it in, the more likely we're going to have the resources. Um, but the intent of the announcement is to provide a way for the private researcher and that be that commercial university or nonprofit to submit a proposal to perform research on ISS. Um, the evaluation criteria which are listed in the proposal and I just are in the, the AO which I just pulled um, some of the key words out of here. We evaluate them based on your approach. Is it feasible? Do we really think that we can, that, that what you're proposing can be done? Um, is it suitable and relevant to ISS? Um, and this is in part to get to, we're not flying as a business, we're not going to let you fly a, a set of class rings and have them come back so that you can sell them for money. That, that may be a viable business model, but that's not using station in the way that it was intended to be used for research and technology development. If you want to go do that, there's other guys who are doing that, and that's not what we're going to use the national asset for. So that's what we mean when we look at, at relevance and suitability. Um, that's not a suitable use of, a, of the multi-billion dollar asset that was built by the government. Um, priorities placed on concepts that create an increase in the current state of the art or develop a, a new business model or a new, new capability. Um, and this is, this is a national lab and so I, I tend to say in the U.S. but um, they can partner with other companies, uh, other, uh, other partners, international partners, but the, the submitting partner does, or the submitting agency, uh, not agency, the submitting proposer actually does have to be a U.S. company or a U.S. citizen. Um, they can partner with internationals, but, but National Lab is really focused on helping keep the, the U.S. preeminence in technology and space flight, and so that's just, that's the way it's set up. So my apologies to the international partners. Um, the other thing that we evaluate proposals on is the benefit to the public, and, and that's a pretty broad term. Um, benefit to the public means creating more jobs by creating an industry that, based on spaceflight, you can do X, Y, or Z. Uh, creating new materials. Um, things that contribute to the U.S. industrial capacity or economic growth uh, or increase in fundamental knowledge. And the fundamental knowledge is really, we've gotten a number of proposals from university professors who have ideas either using existing hardware on station or um, have need data or just need access to uh, samples or things that are already being taken and there's they're not so much improving the the industrial capacity as they are increasing fundamental knowledge and keeping themselves on the on the forefront of scientific uh, discovery so those are valid um, areas that we look at too and then the financial commitment and business plan, um, that you have the money that you actually can go effectively uh, convert your idea into a profitable business, um, that there's a potential market outside of the U.S. government. Um, 
you're not just building something and, and demonstrating something that then NASA or some other U.S. government agency would end up having to go buy, that there's a product that comes out, um, and that there's some kind of roadmap for that product or service. With the university researchers, this is not nearly as, as important because some of that doesn't really lead to, some of that fundamental knowledge doesn't necessarily lead immediately to a product or a service. Um, but there's some kind of return on the research. So all of these proposals, when we select them, are worked with Space Act agreements. And those are uh, a mechanism that NASA has to enter into agreement where we provide goods or services um, and you bring to the table your, your research, your expertise, your whatever. Um, and we work together, but there's no exchange of funds in a Space Act agreement. Um, at least not from NASA to the other party with, I guess, the two exceptions we have ever done are, are commercial cargo contracts. Um, none of these have funding associated with them. Um, so that's kind of what's going on with the, the standing AO. And then if you go to the next chart. The other one that we put out just recently, I think this came out in April, is the broad agency announcement. And the title of that is to enable support equipment and services for ISS as a national lab. This one actually could have funding on it, um, depending on what the, uh, the concept is. Um, a little bit, this has got the cart before the horse. So the point of this was to be able to set ourselves up so that as the new budgets came in with FY11 and as ideas came up, we could have things prepared and contracts in place and things ready so that if we do have a research idea or we do have a an area where we want to go um, have someone develop hardware that's going to expand the use of space station for national lab users and others, that there's a way we can um, have that in place in advance and we can quickly go and get something on contract. So it's a way to kind of get ahead in the procurement cycle so that when the budgets show up, we don't spend six months to 12 months trying to write an announcement. Uh, or an RFP and put that out on the street and go through the whole process there. It, it kind of short circuits and gets us a step ahead in that. There's two, um, again, this one's focused on the private researcher, commercial, university, or nonprofit. Um, and the goal here is to help station be a more useful national lab. There's two what we call thrust areas, is what they're referred to in the BAA. The first one being payload integration and operations support service. And I'm going to talk through a little bit what each of these bullets means and what our, our vision was for these. <clears throat> and then um, I'll talk about the criteria we use to evaluate these on the next chart. So the, um, the Payload Integration Operations Support Service has three sort of, of goals. Um, advancing payload integration systems to enable utilization for a broad range of research and technology. OK, that's a lot of words. What that means is. Some of you might be aware that Station's maybe not the most user-friendly platform in the world, and it runs off of, like, command and data handling runs off of a 1553 architecture. Well, pretty much nobody uses that anymore but us and some of the military guys, and the military guys are actually getting away from it faster than NASA is. So an advanced integration system would be something that would, would be developed that could interpret and go between what's currently the state of the art, which is, you know, um, uh, lab view or something that people use in their labs and could do the conversion from commanding that you would do there through the system to commanding that you could do that would send it up through 1553 and make all of that invisible to the user. Um, so things that would make it more user friendly. Um, I often cite an example here, you know, Station uses a very specific type of quick disconnect for its, its thermal system. Um, lead times on those QDs is six months to a year. So if you have a payload idea and you have to tie into the thermal system for cooling and you want to do something quickly, if you don't have a QD in your hand, you're pretty well not doing something quickly. Um, so tech, you know, some kind of, of kit or system that would give you, uh, you know, have the connectors into the thermal system, but then would give you the other end, the mating end of multiple other QDs that are commonly used in labs that are readily available that people have in their research organizations is, is another kind of something that would help enable utilization for a lot of people and would give you that sort of interface between what we had when we built station and what's what's going on now because technologies and systems have changed so much that you know there's a big gap and a lot of what we have is actually close to being uh, obsolete 
And so being able to, to bridge that gap is, is one of the goals of this. Um, the second area there is the emphasis on systems or processes that would enable new areas of research or production not currently available. Um, this is more uh, along the lines of we have a, a, a light microscopy module on board, um, and, but it's not capable right now of doing biological samples. So a system that could bridge that gap and now you've opened up the microscope for multiple other users is a concept of what, we, what we're thinking of in there. And the examples I'm pulling out are things that we're actually in the process of doing now, so um, they're not, you know, suggestions for you as much as they are the kind of idea that we're after. Um, and then the third one under the integration and ops is support services um, and include project-specific integration and operation support on an as-needed basis. And this is code for all of you guys in the room who we refer to as implementation partners who who do, see, do safety data packages, who do certification packages, who design and, and verify hardware, um, who provide all of the ops planning and procedure development um, as part of your getting a payload ready for some payload or principal investigator. This is code for we want to put you guys on contract so that if an idea comes in and we need to go help a researcher who's got an idea but doesn't know how to get through the NASA system, doesn't know the ins and outs of all of the, the paperwork and the, the processes and procedures, by having multiple um, implementation partners on contract, we can then go and, and fund one of those to do the integration, what we refer to as the space flight specific integration work. The stuff that if I was doing it in my lab, I'd have everything I need and I know exactly what I need to do. But when I go to do it in space, now all of a sudden there's this pile of stuff on top of what I've done in my lab. And there's people who know how to do that. There's a number of all of these implementation partners in the rooms, TBE and Wiley and all the guys in the other room. They all know how to go do all this extra stuff. And we want to get these guys on a contract so that as researchers come in who need that help, we can go help on the NASA side to fund those to to enable new areas of research that need just a flight or two to get going before the commercial company is willing to pitch in the extra money to, to go do that work or to fund that work themselves. What we found in trying to start up National Lab is that we're